Hey trail travelers, this is Carrie with the Trail Traveler and we're going to start a whole series on radio communications and we're going to start off by talking about GMRS. So stay right there, we'll be right back. If you're on any Jeep groups or Jeep forums, there's probably two super common questions you'll see all the time. One is, can I fit 35 inch tires without a lift? And second is, what type of radio should I get? And the first one, I'll leave it to the rest of the community to answer, but on radios, I'm gonna talk about radios. Now in the past, you know, going back even just a few years, a couple years, even a year ago in some cases, CB ruled. It was the way to go. Everybody had a CB. If you were on a trail, you had a CB. It's what you had. And there's some good reasons for it. CB has been around for a long, long time. A long time. I have many years. I, I'm 55 right now. And I think when I got into CB when I was 17, 18 years old, it was probably even past peak of CB usage at the time. Uh, but it was something we were really into. I had a big base station at home. I could shoot uh, sideband and get people all over the country. It was really cool. It was kind of like ham radio on a budget. Well, in our vehicles, CB was just the go-to. Very easy to install, relatively affordable, and they worked for the most part. Now, CB does have its problems in terms of range. It can't use repeaters. It's real, real line of sight communication, and it drops off very, very quickly. The farther you go, the power just drops off, and very quickly, it starts to become hard to understand somebody. It's very easy to get mixed communication uh, coming in when you have two people with different signal strengths out, out away from you and you can actually hear both of them sometimes. So CB has its, its issues. The big advantage of CB was you didn't need, a, well still, you don't need a license to run CB. Well, aside from CB, what was the other option? It was to go to ham radio. And ham radios are still relatively expensive. They're, they take bigger antennas, they require you to go and take a test. It's not as hard as it used to be, but you still need that license in order to operate on ham radio frequencies. Now GMRS was kind of designed to fit in between those two. It carries a lot of the advantages of ham radio, but the ease of use and cost today of CB. Now, you do need to have a license to operate a GMRS radio, but there's no test involved. You get your license. It usually takes 24 to 48 hours. You get your call sign, just like you do a ham radio, and it's good for 10 years. So $7 a year to be able to operate GMRS radios. So, yeah, that $70 can be a big hit, but that's it. There's no other licensing or testing involved. So me, personally, I'm a huge fan of GMRS, and there's some good reasons why I am. Number one, like I said, it's, more, it's got more power, so I have more range. I can use repeaters, and here in Colorado, we have a series of repeaters on the front range that give me tremendous footprint when I'm trying to communicate with someone. Now, often when I'm back on the, the backside of the, the mountains, uh, on the, you know, up in the Rocky Mountains, I may not be able to reach those repeaters, which is fine, I don't need to, but when I'm with a group of people, the GMRS has outperformed CB every time. And GMRS here in Colorado is really growing quickly. Now, I go out wheeling almost every weekend, and I'm almost never with the same group of people. I go out with all kinds of people, all, you know, a huge, diverse group of people. And I haven't used my CB in about 10 months. 
because everyone I've gone out with has had GMRS radios. Now, another advantage of GMRS is that it also will work on FRS frequencies. Now, FRS is lower power than GMRS, but it's still completely compatible. And GMRS G <laughs> and FRS radios are extremely affordable. You can buy a two pack of walkie talkies that support FRS frequencies at Home Depot or Amazon, a two pack for about $30, $15 a radio. I mean, you can't buy a handheld CB that's any good at all for $15. You certainly aren't going to get a two pack for 30 bucks and that range is not going to be as good. The quality of the audio is not going to be as good. The number of features that you have isn't going to be as good. Now CB will offer up to 40 channels where FRS is, I believe seven channels. So it's a limited range, but it's still very, very useful, especially out on a trail where you're only talking to a small group of people. Now, when I go out, and I do my new driver experiences, I require everybody to purchase these FRS radios because I can communicate to them with my GMRS radio. Now in the past, I've had a Kenwood radio in my Jeep. And the reason I run that one is because I got it for dirt cheap. It's like an $850 radio. I picked it up for $99 used. I had it installed. It works great. It's a pain in the butt to program. It's it doesn't have all the consumerized features. That radio is really designed to be sold to businesses and be programmed to a certain frequency that that company uses for their communications. Setting it up as a GMRS radio is totally possible and I've done it, but it's not as flexible in some areas and it's not very user friendly to program. So recently I learned about the BTEC GMRS 50X1, which is the radio I have here. Now, some of you may have heard the name Bofang before, and a lot of people have these little Bofang handhelds. Now, those are technically ham radio uh, handhelds, but they can be programmed on GMRS frequencies. Just a little caveat, I will point it out because if I don't, someone will call me out on it. Those are not technically legal to be used on GMRS frequencies because you, you can't just randomly change frequencies on a GMRS radio. You, I believe it has to have a fixed antenna unless it's a base station. I mean, there's a number of restrictions that the FCC puts on the manufacture of GMRS handholds and, and base, and you know, mobile units like this. So while I've had the Kenwood in the vehicle for over a year, I've been very happy with it. I wanted one that was kind of more consumer friendly, one that I was really, uh, that I could get behind, that I could recommend to people, that I could really show people how to use it if they were having problems. If you have one of these and I only had my Kenwood and I didn't know how this worked, it'd kind of be a pain to kind of help somebody out with setting one of these up. So I wanted to get one of these uh, 50X1s and uh, to be completely transparent, I reached out to BTEC and I asked for one. I said, hey, I wanna do some GMRS uh, videos. Can you uh, loan me a radio? They said, absolutely, we'd love to help you out. And so they sent me the 50X1. So, um, but it was the radio I had picked out that I wanted to use. And had they not sent it to me, I would have just bought it. It's about 180 bucks on Amazon, not horribly expensive. Now, I mentioned that it's manufactured by Bofang. And like I said, they make a variety of, of different radios. And this one is technically labeled, or not technically, I guess it's marketing wise, it's labeled BTEC. And what is BTEC and how is that different from Bofang? Well, BTEC is a US distributor of the Bofang radios. And what they do is they bring in the radios from Bofang and they make a couple changes here and there. On this one, I'm not exactly sure what all they do. They probably program it for the GMRS frequencies because 
GMRS is not global and different countries have different kind of subsets and other types of things. But here in the US, it's called GMRS. So they set it up for GMRS and they make sure that it's 100% legal to use on GMRS frequencies. So I love that. Uh, the other thing they do is they rewrite the manual. They don't just go to Google Translate and put everything in and copy it out and it comes out very difficult to understand. They rewrite the manual. It is very clear. Now, granted, this thing has tons of features and some of them are very complicated and probably 99% of the people who buy this radio will never use some of the features that this has, but at least in the manual, it explains how to use them or how to set them up if the places around you support it. Now, uh, this radio will work with the repeaters that we have around here, so that's great. And it has some really, really cool features. Um, it has um, all the GMRS frequencies, the FRS frequencies. It has an FM radio receiver. I, I don't know why, um, I, but it does. <laughs> I mean, it has an FM radio receiver. Um, Semi-duplex receiver, uh, selective calling method, supports CT, CSS, DACS, tone burst, ETMF, two-tone, and five-tone. Not going to get into all those things. If you know what those are, great. Uh, wide and narrow band supported. Uh, 15 programmable GMRS two-way channels. Seven programmable uh, GMRS two-way channels that are receive only. Eight programmable GMRS repeater channels. Now, that's cool. I only need three here. That's the ones that are, are local. But there's repeaters like in Moab. So I could set up repeaters for areas that I only visit once in a while and have them in here. And that's super cool. 226 programmable scanner channels. That's just awesome. I mean, that's super cool. Uh, and the scanning modes can be channel, frequency, and tone. So that's super cool. Has a lot of other adjustable squelch, work mode, alphanumeric channel storage, PC programmable, busy channel lock. I mean, the thing is loaded with features. It also supports NOAA weather radio. So <laughs> lots of tech packed into this guy. So let's, let's open this up and see what we all get in this radio. So again, the user manual, which is actually fairly large, uh, yeah, 69 pages of the manual. Super cool. Um, I said, I, I've read through this and it doesn't feel like it's translated. It feels like it was written by somebody with a solid grasp of the English language. Um, so you got a really long power cord to connect up to your battery or however you're going to connect it to. You got a bag of nuts and bolts and a fuse there. Your mic holder in the center is the radio. We'll take a look at that. You got a mount to be able to mount it somewhere. We'll take a quick look at the radio. So here's the radio itself. It's actually kind of, I don't know, tactical looking for lack of a better word. I, I kind of like the look of it. The uh, power, real solid feeling push button. Volume over here. Your channel has indents, click, 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 like that. You got really nice feeling uh, buttons for the different features. The port on the front here is for the microphone and the port over here is for the programming cable. Now, fortunately, they did send me the, the programming cable, so I'll be able to program it, which for me is going to mean setting it up for our repeaters that are here. They're not generic repeater setups. There's some custom stuff that needs to be done. Now, the screen here is a multi-color, multi-line display. Really cool. There's a ton of info on the screen from the frequencies, the scanning modes, the power output settings, the transmit power setting. Just, I mean, there's tons of stuff. And you can customize some of the lines so it can say, you know, Trail Traveler. I don't know how many 
characters I can do yet, but uh, pretty neat. And this thing's got some heft to it too. And on the back, you've got your antenna port, your power cable, and there's a fan inside. Now, from what I hear, oh, and on the bottom is the speaker. Now, what I've, from what I've heard from other people, the speaker is quite loud. So we'll have to uh, put that to the test as well. And over here is the microphone. Excuse the crazy noise while I get this out of the bag. And this is a really nice feeling microphone. It's got metal for the mic stand or the mic holder. Uh, I see, you know, a number of cheaper microphones where this is plastic and I, I just don't care for this uh, or I don't care for the plastic. It wears, it, it, they get loose over time. And this has four nubs here that are kind of like on springs. So when it's in that mic holder, it's going to be really, really solid. The push to talk switch feels very solid. And you see it has a whole numeric display on here. On the top, we have menu, which will get us into the menu modes. Because a lot of the stuff, even though you can plug it into a computer and program it, you can do a ton of stuff and make changes right from the remote. And that's pretty darn cool. So you have a menu, you have up and down, uh, exit, A and B, which uh, allows you to switch between a couple channels. The scan button is right there to start scanning and a lock to keep you from accidentally changing frequencies. Now, one of the things that I really like about this radio that I don't have on mine. On mine, I, I do have a scan feature and I can program specific uh, frequencies to scan and actually setting it up is a real pain in the butt. Um, and I like once in a while I'll get it to work and then I'll make a change and it doesn't work and I have to fiddle with it for a while to get it to work again. So being a very consumer friendly product, this is gonna be very easy to set up the scan modes. It can actually be listening on two or four other frequencies. So I may have my regular channel that I'm on all the time that I talk locally with some buddies and I might have another one on the repeater. So if someone in the community is trying to reach out or do a mic check or something, I can hear that. But when I'm on the trail, this is where I, I, I might actually use this on the trail. Sometimes we have large groups of people. And a couple of weeks ago, we had 13, well, 14 Jeeps counting myself. So that was a lot of vehicles on the trail. And it would be nice to have one frequency that I'm transmitting and receiving to everybody in the group and another frequency for the person all the way at the back. So like an, another uh, one of my group leaders uh, with me can be all the way at the back. And if there's an issue, he can say something to me without everybody else hearing it. So uh, you can also do that with like privacy tones and there's some other features of GMRS, but he could just be on a separate frequency. If he needs to reach me and say, hey dude, you really need to check this out over here or something is not going quite smooth, but he doesn't want to just say it publicly to everybody, he can actually reach me on a different frequency. And it would pick it up and I could start transmitting on that frequency and eventually you can set a timeout for it to go back to the other one. So that could could be a really useful feature uh, in some cases or, you know, like today we would have a CB between us while I'm talking to, on GMRS or FRS to everybody else. So. But it could be a solution to a not that big of a problem. What I want to do is get into setting this up. We'll, we'll get it hooked up. We'll do some tests. We'll hear the audio and everything. But today I just kind of wanted to do an overview of GMRS, CB, ham radio, and talk about a radio that I'm very excited to start using because anybody can buy this radio. Not well, I guess anybody could go and buy the Kenwood that I have, but the software is an additional cost and it's really designed for a radio technician. It's not the easiest software in the world to use. 
versus this one, which uses open source software called Chirp, which I've used on my other some other radios that I have. Uh, freely available software to do this. The radio is not very expensive. So I really wanted to have a radio to kind of move forward with the talk about radios in general, as well as things specific to GMRS that I could recommend and say, hey, if you get this one, I can help you with it. And I can do some tutorials on how to use this radio. And I'm a big fan of Bofang. I've used their products for a long, long time. They've never failed me once. And this seems to be an excellent choice for a mobile radio. So hopefully this kind of gives you a, a really high level overview of the different types of radios available. Now, should you run right out and buy a GMRS radio and just never buy a CB? The short answer is it depends. And I can't tell you that you should just forget about CB radios because in some places it is still very much the predominant radio. So when I say it depends, it depends on who you're going wheeling with. Who are you trying to communicate with? Now, if you go out with the same people all the time and none of them have GMRS radios, they all have CB, well, guess what you should get? You should get a CB radio. No brainer, right? But if you're in a more, um, uh, I was gonna, I was gonna say a more progressive area, but it's not really the right word for it. But if you're in an area like here in Colorado, where more and more and more people are moving to GMRS, well, then it makes sense to have GMRS. Now, I, I'm gonna continue to have both because I never know who I'm gonna be on the trail with. My CB antenna isn't even connected. I have to actually take it out of a storage location in the Jeep and put it on if I'm gonna use it. That's how rarely I use the CB. But it's there in case I'm with some people, they all have CB, and I'm like, all right, it's fine. I'll, I'll hook the CB up. Now, GMRS is great because, like I said, not only is this mobile unit fairly affordable, you can buy those two packs of FRS radios for 30 bucks. You might as well, if you're gonna go GMRS, buy one of those two packs, keep them in your vehicle, and if you go out with some people who either don't have a radio at all or they only have CB, hand them out and go, here you go. You know, now we can all communicate. Great. You know, at 30 bucks, it's a pretty cheap investment to be able to make sure that you have communications. Now, when a lot of people in an area have all gone out and bought the two pack, there's a lot of radios to go around. So big advantage on the GMRS side, but CB, still is very, very popular in some areas. So definitely talk to the people that you wheel with. If you're in a particular area, find the Jeep groups in your area, ask what people are using. Now, what I will tell you is the larger Jeep events, Jeep Jamboree as a big example. Now, they've been on CB for since the beginning of time. And this year they said, we're gonna go to GMRS. So if you go to Jeep Jamboree and you're going to be out on the trails, you're required to have a GMRS radio. Uh, why? Why would they do that? Well, there's some good reasons. Like I said, privacy codes. So you can find specific people or groups of people that you want to talk to, uh, leaders, uh, spotters, things like that. The range is much better. Uh, I don't know if in some of those areas they're going to actually set up repeaters to make the communication over the entire area better, or maybe they're already in areas that have repeaters. So the ability to communicate over a vast area is so much better, not just so much better, possible. You can't communicate with CB over a broad area. It just doesn't work. So in a large event where you have people on trails all over the place, and if there's an emergency or something that needs to be communicated out to everybody, GMRS is gonna be the way to go. So that's why your bigger Jeep events are all moving to GMRS. So if you want to future-proof yourself, you're gonna to wanna to invest in a GMRS radio. Now, ham, ham is a specialty thing. The radios are more expensive. You have to study for the test. You have to, 
you know, go and take the test. You have to, you know, really know more to operate those radios than you do with GMRS. Now there's etiquette involved in using GMRS and we'll, we'll probably talk about that in another video. Acquainted with the different primary forms of communication, CB, GMRS, FRS, and HAM, and to help decide what may be most appropriate for you and to start saying, hey, I'm gonna do a series of videos on GMRS radios and this is the radio I'm gonna get or that I got. So if you're gonna go out and you wanna buy a GMRS radio, well, look in the link below and you'll find a link to this on Amazon now um, and then follow along in the upcoming videos, I guess. But uh, like I said, BTEC is not paying me for this. They're not sponsoring me in any way on this. They, I asked for a loaner, they sent me one and that's what this is. So thank you to BTEC for helping me to get something in here that I think a lot of people can use because it's a very accessible radio versus the Kenwood that I already had. So big shout out to BTEC. Thank you very much, really appreciate that. And for all you guys out there, well, hope this was a nice little intro into the different types of radios. We're gonna dig deeper as we move forward once we do the install, which is gonna be super simple. It's just power and ground. Really couldn't be simpler. I already have an antenna run, so that's gonna be simple. I do wanna po point out one thing that is, is worth noting, right? If you're gonna put something like this in your vehicle, you do, do need an external antenna, and a very popular option has been the magnetic mount antennas. Um, they work pretty darn good. They're, they're actually surprisingly good, and you can just pop it off and store it when you're not using it. However, you gotta think through this if you have a Jeep. Now, most of us, our top is either a soft top or it's a fiberglass hard top. Magnetic mount's not gonna work on there. And on the newer models, the JL models, the hood, the, <laughs> the body, the, the whole metal body is aluminum. Magnet, magnets don't stick on aluminum. So hey, don't buy a magnetic mount if you have a JL. So if you have a steel body, a magnetic mount will work great. If you have an aluminum body like a JL, there's no place to put the magnetic mount. Now, maybe you have steel bumpers and you could clunk it on to the steel bumper and that would work just fine. But understand that putting it on the hood or some other of the body components is not gonna work because they're aluminum. And think about the fact that your roof is probably fiberglass or fabric. It's not gonna work there either. Steel bumpers, yeah, magnetic uh, antennas will work just fine. So just wanted to point that out um, for anyone who was thinking about just doing some radio shopping tonight. So thanks for watching everybody. This has been Kerry with Trail Traveler. Please like, share, and subscribe. I really appreciate it. And it does help grow the channel as more and more people will learn about it. Thank you once again to BTEC for supplying us with this loaner radio so that we can start doing some good articles on communications or comms, as a lot of us like to say. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.